The Mindful Athlete Podcast. We empower individuals through conversation of athletic performance, recovery, and philosophy. Enjoy the episode. Welcome back, guys, to the Mindful Athlete Podcast. You're joining myself and Finney here for another episode. And today we're going to be talking about programming. Yeah, uh, right. So we'll, we'll we'll go pretty fast, pretty uh, quick. So t- tell us, as a CrossFit athlete, how you'd, how you'd program your training for like the year. So like, I don't really program my training. I'm going to be honest. I have a coach who does it. So like in CrossFit, you normally like turn up to classes and they're already programmed. So like yeah. it's so like it's all based around the CrossFit Open, which we have in February and March time each year, which is basically a qualification point for the CrossFit Games. So with that, it's basically just going. It's just testing. So like that's like the big test of fitness it all year. You may not be yeah. like the the CrossFit Games athlete, but um, it's more about just being better than last year. So even if you're doing it scaled, it might be, oh, I want to do one workout RX, but um, it's heavily dependent on the box. So it's like very varied. So like CrossFit's constantly varied functional movement performed at high intensity. So like throughout the year, it's very varied. So I've actually got the, um, the template, which a lot of boxes use. So me at the minute, CrossFit, if you're doing it individually, prefers you to do a free on one day off. Like that's the preferred one. For me, I prefer a bit more extra rest, like a three on two on, but obviously I follow the three, three on one off at the minute and it's working really well for me. So um, boxes will usually do a five days on and a two days off, but I'll go over the, um, obviously the three day on one off. So it says that you should do on day one, one structural, which is like your cardio. So that can be anything from like running, burpees. So that's just a single modality because we have three modalities in CrossFit. So we have uh, monostructural, gymnastics and weightlifting. Weightlifting can be anything from like your powerlifting to Olympic weightlifting, even just throwing a dumbbell around. But day one is monostructural. Day two is more like a Metcon. So this is like your gymnastics and weightlifting. So like that's paired together. So this is just your stereotypical what CrossFit would prescribe, which CrossFit says, oh, we recommend you do this. So day two is gymnastics and weightlifting. So it'll probably be a couplet of uh, doing, let's say, muscle ups and deadlifts. Let's use that as an example. Or we can use um, 21, 15, 9 thrusters and pull ups. So that's a good example. So Fran. Day yeah. three, they recommend uh, monostructural gymnastics and weightlifting. So that'll mainly be a triplet. So you're mixing all them movements together now. Then you'll have number day four off. Day five will be just gymnastics, soul based, so it recommends. Then day day six will be weightlifting and monostructural, so you're changing them around now. And then uh, day seven will be gymnastics, weightlifting, and monostructural. And then day after that, you'll probably have a day off, or you'll probably carry on. Um, where they'll say it'll be weightlifting. Day after that, it'll be monostructural and gymnastics, weightlifting, monostructural gymnastics, and then day off. So like normally a three on, one off, but it's about mixing it so you're getting the best outcome. So so you're trying to be the best varied athlete. So a lot of people follow that. They don't even notice they're following that because the gym programs it. I'll get up the other stuff. But obviously it's different because you've got the everyday crossfit and then you've got the crossfit competitor so for me i'm more of like at the minute i'm i want to be a crossfit competitor one day but at the minute i'm more in the middle so like the classes i don't care what anyone says if you follow the classes that'll get you to a good high standard of athlete because it depends how you scale it mm-hmm. so it so like in crossfit you'll be doing the same workout so like this is all to do with the programming to so say if you can't do a muscle up you'll probably be doing pull-ups or low bar pull-ups or it, it's going to be a way that's going to progress you so you can do that end goal of doing a muscle-up in the future, but a way that you can get the reps out so it's a progression, yeah. which I think is really cool about CrossFit because you'll have some, you're all doing the same workout, it's just different scale. So let's say I'm doing a clean jerk at 60 kilos, doing 30, grace, 30 clean jerks for time, you'll have someone doing it at 40, 30, or even just the bar. So it all depends on the individual. 
which I think is pretty cool there. Um, so, like, I know a lot of people who follow this template um, by doing a three-on-one-off and doing what CrossFit prescribed, not even knowing, and they are amazing athletes. Like, there's yeah. a few people at my gym who are really good athletes, and they've just been following the classes, and then they'll do a bit of skill work in the background. So, at the minute, I'm on the classes, so which is very similar to that, but the gym owner programs it how he wants to. Uh, but he'll also program me like let's say it'll give me three or four extra sessions so one at the minute is more like um, getting better at stability so I've got shoulder injury so more rehab in that and getting me good at scat retractions because I've done something to my um, shoulder blade Uh, then it'll be something like handstand push-ups just to get better at them handstand push-ups then it'll be something either pull-up or muscle-up based and then I'll have a weightlifting session, which is heavily focused on like a proper strength component, like a back squat. But then it'll have like my Olympic lifting stuff. So it'll either be a snatch, clean and jerk. It'll be all specific, but it's not random. It's done like as a program, you finish that program, then you move on to the next thing. Because in CrossFit, it's very hard to meet all all the skills that you've got to do. So you just like not randomize it. You follow it in a block. So how we was talking about it earlier, like a mesocycle. So you do that yeah. for 12 weeks get better at that then you'll change onto something else and so on and so on so that's how i do it the way i trained when i was going for the arnold's was very different so we did like a mesocycle but it was quite a short cycle so we did a small off program which was to get our strength up pretty quick so that's a back squat program of um about three days three or four days a week so you're back squatting every week day for six weeks you'll add 10 kilos each week onto your back squat but we did like the starting phase so you have a phase in and then you have like a first few week block but by the end of it you're doing like your one rep max for like 10 sets of three so that's what i did for my competition prep and then we did like an engine builder which was like focusing more on the cardiovascular element like the monostructural Mm -hmm. so that was another sit further six week that's that was for the Arnold fitness games. Um, that's what we did. And then we did like our skills and like in the background, but I also added swimming and then I also did like the classes as well. But, um, pe- but with the problem with CrossFit is people who are new, who want to be athletes, the think, Oh, I don't need to do the classes. I'm just going to pick and choose. We call that cherry picking, but they don't really get better. Yeah. Or they'll just pick, oh, I'm going to do this skill and I'm just going to train this skill. But, like, for me, I think the class is the best element because you've got people of varied, like, levels. For me, this, for me anyway, and you can even compete against people, which I yeah. think is pretty cool. So you, you're pushing each other. It's like, it's like you having a, uh, a buddy to train with in the gym, which you'll find, like, when you're training with someone, you're pushing each other, aren't you? Yeah. You, that, you don't want the other person getting the extra rep. Exactly, but um, that's how we do it in CrossFit. Like, it's very, it's very different. So it's not like yeah. everyone says CrossFit's randomised. That is not the case. It is structured, <clears throat> and it is structured around a bigger plan of getting better for the Open. But in them classes, like I say, so like you know how I said I did extra skills mm. outside. Yeah. In the classes, it will normally be a skill element. So that could be like a snatch, clean and jerk strength or it'll be a skill like a gymnastic skill like handstand walks so you've still got them skills in the class it's not like you're not doing it it's more like the extra skills i do on top is getting me better at my weaknesses (laughs) and like goals that i want to achieve at the end of the year yeah does does that um, change throughout like the year say you've got a competition coming up like would your programming change to be like you'd increase the the intensity, lower the volume or anything like that? Yeah, so I'd still follow the classes, but I'd probably go on like, the only extra thing I'd do really is hop on an engine builder program, but and I'd probably do like a strength block before that to get stronger, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. But it's very dependent. So like like I said, when I did the Arnold's, um, it changed heavily. So I still did some classes, not a lot, but I did some because it's still important because you're a CrossFit athlete. So you can't take the Metcons, which is like, what all you guys call circuits, extreme circuits. Um, yeah. There's no point in taking that out because that's your bread and butter. Mm-hmm. 
So like with a comp, you'll still have them in, but you'll also have like, it's a lot of skill based stuff. So like um, CrossFit, they recommend like you do like one Metcon a day in training. And then yep. the other stuff, you'll look at um, a CrossFit Games athlete. I'm not a CrossFit Games athlete, nowhere near that caliber. But you'll look at like a normal CrossFit Games athlete and they'll probably do one Metcon a day, which is like a, the stereotypical CrossFit workout. And mm-hmm. then the rest will be like skill based. Um, and maybe like some specific cardio stuff. Yeah. So it's not all just one thing. Got you. Like, yeah, that's really it for CrossFit. Quite quite short and sweet there. But um, yeah, I mean it's co- keep, it's com- keep it simple. It's complicated. Yeah, it's complica- it it's complicated from a distance, but like it's not random. So I mean, like that, um, that's what fitness is though. You just keep yeah, it simple so, and it'll work. Yeah, so with CrossFit it's training to be the best all round athlete at everything. So you like yeah. you're trying to get better at stuff that not everyone else could do. Because then yeah. it, it's about being gen, general general preparedness, I think it is. That the yeah, the general one. physical preparedness. preparedness. Yeah. yeah, and you use that by going through, uh, you know, the the list of uh, fitness components. Mm-hmm. So it may not look good. So like, you know how we had Adam on the other week and he said, oh, it looks like random, like in the competitions. So like with, um, say you're at a competition and like the program like, let's say a one rep max snatch everyone would just like that's just strength you're just testing strength but with um a snatch you're also test you're testing strength you're testing flexibility like your mobility so there's and then you're testing coordination because let's be honest doing olympic yeah doing olympic lifting it's a lot of coordination so there you've tested three things yeah so um, people look at the CrossFit Games and be like, why Why are they just doing like races with deadlifts? But like there's a bigger plan at, at play. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I've talked about like the um, training for CrossFit. Um, I've talked about, so like talked about training for CrossFit just, and then just talking about the competition uh, programming. So like it's not random. It's thinking about, oh, so if we program this now, will they be able to perform for the next one if we did this? That's what we talked about when I worked in the gym, like when they were programming workouts mm-hmm. further on. So um, I did one a few years ago that we programmed, and like it was absolutely horrible. It was like dumbbell DT. Uh, I've, I've got the, um, the works that, but before that you had to do like a certain amount of calories on the assault bike. And that was before the finale and like after your lungs your legs did not work but then they made it so like the heats the heats weren't too long away before the finale so it's about seeing oh will they be able to perform now when they're tired like, yeah and in the crossfit open what they'll normally do is oh we're going to do like a full workout and then we're going to get you to test your one rep max because people may think oh damn i can't do a one rep max i'm not recovered like you know the optimal people but it's like are you physically prepared to do that like yeah so it's very much having work capacity yeah exactly it's about being the most all-round athlete so like they program the um, crossfit competitions so like you may not come first in every event so it's not about the person who comes first in every event it's about the person who's most consistent in every event (laughs) So like you'll look at Justin Medeiros when he won his first CrossFit Games, he only won won one event, and he just kept all the other events consistent. So yeah. you don't have to absolutely dominate to win. It's about the person who's most all rounded, mm-hmm. and that's what it's programmed for. Yeah, so I, I guess hope... that goes with like the because one one person could be amazing at like i don't know a ring muscle up or something just yeah exactly. genetically gifted so then they'd have to work on so yeah they'd keep that level of fitness but then you've got to yeah. work on their other skills to try and yeah at it's least about match hitting every skill but then it's yeah. not about hitting every skill it's about like being could this come up in competitions like a few years ago they added in like do you know what crossovers are when you skip them uh no so, like, you i only know double unders 
<laughs> so you do a skip and then you cross over and do another okay. skip. Yeah. Um, and CrossFit athletes, they only know how to do double unders. Mm-hmm. So doing that, it fucked everyone up. So like, it's about thinking, could this happen in competition? So like Matt Fraser talks about it a lot. So he said, every, you see all these specialists, but are they all rounded? So he made himself so he hit everything consistently yeah. and like not hit his strengths too often. Cause let's be honest, if you play to your strengths, especially in a sport like CrossFit, you're, you're not, you're not going to be any good, are you? Mm-hmm. It's about, go, it's about oh. targeting your weaknesses. So like, um, Rich Ronan, in his first year at the CrossFit Games in 2010, he couldn't climb a rope. And like Dave Castro, the guy who programmed it, said, if he can't climb up at least once, he's not going to come second. And like a lot of the best CrossFit athletes, the they when they first get in, like the, they've been weak at something, especially the top two. Matt Fraser and uh, Rich Fronin and then they have hit it consistently they've added it into their training even if it's like a finisher to then achieve that yeah so it's about being consistent consistency is key like e- even as a hybrid athlete as you know like you, if you're not consistent at something in all areas so like it doesn't work to your favour no yeah I know, I know what you mean um yeah. You have, to, you have to keep up the runs. It's um exactly like I, I guess I guess you could put this into CrossFit terms as well because somebody could have an amazing anaerobic capacity. Yeah, aerobic could be pretty good, but the moment they're running in like zone two for so long because they've not been doing specific work in zone two, they just hmm. did knacker. You know, so that 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 also happened to Rich Fronin. I think it was in the triple three. And the thought that he wouldn't win the CrossFit Games, it was his last year, absolutely terrible at running. And then he just walked it. And they were scared that he wouldn't finish in like, finish at top Mm -hmm. that year on his year of retirement. But then he did. And then he got better at running and he got a coach who was like the best in the game. But yeah, Yeah. it pays to be good in all areas. Like it's it's mainly about hitting all different time zones and like things that you know are going to come in workouts. So like, a common one is thrusters, skipping, uh, handstand walks. So it's about practicing for what's most common, but then also that little extra time you do have practicing what's not going to, what you don't think could come up, but what could come up. Yeah. Like the unknown. Got you. But that, yeah, that's CrossFit. Uh, how about yourself as a hybrid athlete? Yeah, talk about, so talk more about your programming. I'd say anyone going into like more of a hybrid athleticism, it it differs quite a bit from um from CrossFit. Yeah, because obviously you've got lifts you want to hit, and most people yeah. will have like an event like a race that they're going to perform yeah. in. Yeah. So what you should really do is, so say. We'll start it off as though someone's just done a race. Like, yeah. shh, yeah. quiet mate. Yeah, dog. Um, yeah, so okay. we'll start it off as though someone's just done a race and they've just yeah. hit their TBs. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. So what What your first um, mesocycle, so a year, yeah. we'll call that We'll call that a macro. And then yeah. we'll say 12 weeks as your mesocycle. Yeah. So we'll we'll call that like the recovery stage. Yeah. So from that, you're basically, the volume and the intensity is going to be pretty low. You're going to be working on almost like skills, like as a CrossFit athlete would. Yeah. Rehabbing in any, anything that you may have got last season or. Yeah. Any injuries. On. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of it is just rehab. Yeah. Maybe some skill work, practicing deadlift, anything mobility. Yeah. And then after that, you're going to move into like your first foundation phase. Yeah. So, what what's really going to rise there is your volume. Your intensity is still going to be pretty low. Yeah. You, you're not trying to peak out early, so yeah. your volume's going to be a lot higher. So, 
I feel like that's a big problem. Sorry about that. I feel like that's a big problem in every sport, though. Like, people peak too early, which is, like, detrimental to their goal of, like, in competition. Yeah. I feel like that's the biggest scary thing is peaking too early. Yeah, so what you can do with the volume is... um, So that's, that's where, like your base running comes in, these long intensity steady state runs. Yeah. Sorry, not long intensity, low intensity. Um Ooh. and lifting more 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 into like hypertrophy. Hypertrophy. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, so you you're really gonna build up that zone two aerobic capacity to keep running yeah. in them stages. I Don't... feel like that's I feel like that's like a baseline for any sport. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. if you've got a good aerobic capacity, you'll be good at lifting. You'll be good at yeah, you know, pretty it, much it everything. It goes for both. So you really is going to focus on building that muscle, building like a, a mm. solid foundation to build everything onto, and then yeah. you, you're going to want them lungs. That that's your main engine. So as a cross yeah. athlete, if you're an engine building, that's what you want. Oh yeah. And Eng- then the engine's critical. Yeah. And yeah. to progress on as a hybrid athlete, you need to that one have, yeah, you need that engine. And two, you, you're gonna want some muscle because like it's, it's gonna mm. help you get far, and also it's gonna help you put on some kgs onto your lifts. And yeah. then after that, you're gonna go into the next um, meso cycle, and yeah. this is when things get a bit more spicy. So, um, so in total, like there's gonna be four meso cycles in that macro cycle. But, so this is the third one, and your your volume is going to come down, but your intensity Ooh. is going to rise a, a yeah. lot more, and towards that's when the, you really yeah. towards the, like, most competition towards many competitions though, like you'll find that like the intensity just gets rapid like before yeah. the open. So like I didn't want to really complicate it that much when I was talking about earlier, but like the last like twelve weeks are like hard like. The intensity is hard. The um, the volume is hard. Like you just feel like you're dying every single day. Yeah. So the volume like really class- decreases, yeah. but yeah. But the intensity is going to match it now. So yeah. You, you're yeah, going to be. Same with us. You're going to be going faster on your runs. Your lifts are going to get yeah. heavier. Less volume, but they're going to get a lot heavier. So instead yeah. of now doing sets of like 12, 10 to twelve failure mm. to. Ha- you know to promote muscle gain yeah instead now you're going to be doing triples and having yeah. that rest and then go for another like double at like 90 percent, 95 percent, and you're running it's going to get faster you're going to be doing faster 10 k's than yeah. instead of them two hour 30 minute long runs Ooh. obviously that they're, they're, they're still they're still needed yeah but you're really going to start pushing the hard yeah, yeah. and you're really going to have to start pushing that speed up and getting into yeah basically adding jet burners onto your engine that's the best way to put it yeah. and then um yeah so that will take us into the next to the next cycle where now it's you're coming up to comp you know what i mean yeah so, so like, how you... do if i can ask this like how do hybrid competitions work because obviously i've told you how crossfit competitions work like not every event will be the same but like how does it work in like a hybrid setting yeah, so let let's say you've got a. We'll, we'll keep How it really simple. Competitions. Let's roughly. let's say you've got like a a half marathon coming up. Yeah. So so there's no like set like hybrid athleticism competition really. Yeah. But say you've got a half marathon, which is pretty standard. Or okay, yeah. we'll say a marathon coming up, and then you've got a powerlifting meet that same month. Yeah. What what you really have to do is now your your volume decreases completely, low volume. Yeah. But the intensity is way up there, mm. so you should be matching the volume of the second phase with the intensity now. Yeah. And what's now now you're just trying to peak for the competition. Yeah. So you're more so, so it's you're trying to peak for that specific competition as opposed to like. It's trying to pick and choose, like, oh, I'm, I need to prioritize running now, or I need to prioritize, um, let's say, powerlifting. I'd, I'd say at this point, it's too late to, like, yeah. get better at either one of them. But you know what I mean. Yeah, so now you're really just trying to just get your body into that state of, like, it's like you have that intensity ready. 
you have yeah. like your foundation yeah. built, you're prehabbed, and your you're just ready layer. to perform. Yeah. yeah. And you mm -hmm. should be at that state where whatever you're hitting now, you are not going to get any further than that. Yeah. Because then after that, you're going to restart that uh, macro cycle all over again and go straight yeah. back into your recovery, which would be known as like a deload in CrossFit terms. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I get what you mean. And you should definitely deload before, like a comp or like a marathon. Oh, or something. hundred percent. Don't like so when, when, when I say up the intensity. Yeah, do. when I say up the intensity, I don't mean like a week before. You're not going to change anything in that week. Yeah, it's going you want to have it. Rotate. You want to have at least a week, a week nice and chilled before. Yeah. Or like half a week nice and chilled, like. Yeah, I, I feel I'd, like I'd that say helps. the the best thing you can do is not change anything. So stop training, yeah. but don't change like Not how training. you normally would. Yeah. yeah. So it's like before a marathon or something, don't go from yeah eating what you normally eat on a training day to all of a sudden just before your marathon you start changing everything you eat and yeah, crap I feel like that. That's the, I that's feel like that's the worst thing. Yeah, because let's be honest it takes two weeks for your body to get used to like a different thing that you're not used to eating the last thing yeah. let's be honest the last thing you want in a competition sorry everyone for me saying this but like last thing you want is the shit yeah yeah especially on a 26.2 mile run yeah oh have you ever had that on a competition like nervous as no i mean i've not really oh. competed yet but i want to yeah i mean i've oh, done mate, a lot of long it. long strava runs i mean I don't know if you've seen them or not, but no, I haven't seen them, mate. You'll have to I've... show me sometime. Yeah, I've, I've I've had a lot of like horrific moments where I thought <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to head back in here, but it normally passes. Yeah, but, I mean, you you should really um, you can kind of base your nutrition strategy with the meso cycle. To be fair, because yeah. as you start coming up, you should really have had that foundation built with training your stomach. Yeah. A lot of people don't train mm. their stomach, whereas I, I run now and I eat brownies as I run. Oh, I could never do it. Obviously, yeah. it's a lot different to, it's a lot different to cross. Obviously, if you're doing like a, a slow, like diesel sort of like, let's say on the bike or on a run, you can have like a snack or something, but like with the high intensity stuff that we're mostly doing, it's a bit like, I do not oh, want yeah, to touch, yeah. any, I don't want to touch anything for two hours. I've made that mistake. Like, uh, eating breakfast like an hour before like i used to eat really crap before i went training like i'd eat like an hour before and i, I remember i had like fish and chips or something when i first started crossfit and yeah. it did not go very i went for like a 5k run with this guy and he was like a lot fitter than me and then i'm just throwing up down the canal i'm like i can do 20 i can do a 5k in 25 minutes don't don't worry i'm not i'm not dying but like i was dying because i ate crap before yeah. I remember when I was younger, um, do you know what caveman training is? It's kind of like CrossFit in a way. It's yeah. where you like smack ties with a sledgehammer and it's like super high intensity. I was probably oh, yeah. like 15, mega underweight. I just couldn't eat for anything. And um, the only thing I could ever get down in the morning was it like a protein shake. Yeah. So I had like a proper, like chunky protein shake. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like protein shakes have changed a I, lot I over could, the years. I know, I know how this is going to come up. And um, <laughs> yeah, and it's my first time ever hitting like that anaerobic threshold where you just want to spew. Ooh. And um, yeah, I Everywhere. remember, mate, for about three hours maybe, I lay on my bed with a bucket just like dying. <laughs> I just couldn't even <laughs> think about eating. It was horrible. I mean, to be fair. That, that's quite it. Have a base. That that that's the importance yeah. of having a base before you add like yeah. anaerobic capacity. Yeah. Build up that zone too. Get your work capacity up there. Yeah. Build some muscle, and you'll be okay. Oh, I've I've got a good story for you. So you know that competition where I told you where like we did like so many rounds on. I think it was like three rounds, and then it was like so many calories on the bike. Ten, and then we did dumbbell D two with like yeah. two twenty with two twenty two point five dumbbells, and like I remember. <laughs> I was I saw this guy in the eyes and I was like it was like I had to beat him he was he had like I think it was like something stupid like a 30 second head start and I was like <laughs> I've got to catch him and then I remember like I see him finish and I'm like there's no point in me trying to catch up to him now he's finished but like I'm I went out that hard like after I was like dying on the floor making noises which I do most days anyway <laughs>
Yeah, mate, that, talk, talk about stuff like that is my mum. She does, yeah. like, CrossFit-style classes. Yeah, my legs didn't work. Like, I was on the pavement outside the gym, and everyone's like, you all right, Josh? And I'm like, no. Yeah, I, I've yeah. honestly had the same thing with my mum. Like, she does, like, CrossFit-style classes, and sometimes, like, I might... She does CrossFit, doesn't she? She does a day of CrossFit, yeah. And um, yeah. If, um, if I feel like... I don't know. If, if I feel good and I feel recovered, I don't really do it anymore now that my program's a bit more structured. But at the yeah. time, I, I used to take part, and, mate, she was just another level. And I'd try and keep up with her. <laughs> and, like, yeah, okay, let's say maybe my kettlebell was heavier. Yeah. But biologically, we're on like the same kind of plane. Yeah, mate. I I I'd throw up before I'd even get close. Like the anaerobic uh, capacities and yeah. So like at my gym a few years ago, this is a story I got told. Um, a guy bought his friend for like a sweat class, and apparently um, he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna beat the girls or something." But like the girls in CrossFit, like are fucking insane like yeah the girls that like my gym are like insane like they are very like fit like uh like just really strong got good uh got good a uh, good all-round fitness and then he tried i think he tried keeping up with one one or two of them and then like he said fuck this and walked out of the class like that's <laughs> a story i've been told before and i'm just like it, it just makes you laugh like people have like this negative stigma and they think, oh, I can do that if they do it. But like, oh me, it, it, if they don't, don't let have... ego, ego yeah. is the enemy. Yeah, it's it's so specific as well. And what people forget is like, like my mom, she's been doing them classes for years, exactly. and it's just like the sport specific like capacity she has for them yeah. classes is just it's it's so bad yeah. actually. It's like. Don't get me wrong, it takes a long time for your body to get conditioned to it. So, like, the first week you start CrossFit is just... Or, like, if you've been off it for a long time, you just feel like death. So, like, yeah. when I went back... So, like, when I had some time off, because I was obviously training for um, another... Some cars for a job, I went back to it a few months ago. And, like, the first month, I did, like, competitive-style training. So, like, I had extra stuff on. And I just felt like I was dying every single day. It was horrible. Yeah, I've had that where, say, stuff's come up and I've had a few weeks. Like, it sucks having a few weeks yeah. off training, but that's yeah, just yeah. being a dad for you. Um, everything's like. going wrong. And uh, so I'll, I, I may be getting, like, a few mile runs in every every few days or whatever. And then I go to do, well, let's say, like, a 14-kilometre time trial run. Oh, my God. It feels yeah. like my lungs are burning. There's cobwebs. I mean, after a while, you get accustomed to it. Yeah. But that, but them first few kilometers, when you've not ran a few kilometers for like maybe a week, oh, it, it feels hurts. like you just like it feels like you're hyperventilating. Yeah, I mean, this this is the thing. Like, you sometimes you feel, most of the time, you should feel better after about a week off. Yeah. But sometimes, when your body mm. isn't like acclimatized to it, and then you yeah. have a week off and then do it then it's horrible yeah. so like going going back to the programming thing so like what pe so like what people have to be careful of like when program for crossfit this is like gym owners and that who program for gyms like a lot of them have to be careful like the volume that they put in and yeah. on different sort of things so like when i did my level one especially on the ghd do you know what that is ghd no, like the, glute, the glute ham developer it's like that weird thing that you see them do pull-ups or like go down and do like hip extensions and back extensions oh okay okay yeah, yeah. I, I, I so do like, them, you yeah. have to be really you have to be really careful on that it said on my level one because um do you know what rhabdomyolysis is yeah so like if you so you've got to be so careful so like this is where all the scaling comes in and this is where like if you have a good gym so like mine's a very good gym they'll make it so like it it suits the volume suits that you, your level if that makes sense yeah. So they'll make sure that um, you're working at the level you're at, um, because like certain things can give you like rhabdomyolysis, which is like the breakdown of muscle tissue. It makes it basically makes your piss look like coke, and it's like to do with your liver. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. That. yeah, I've seen but, it. Um, yeah. So like someone who programs very well, like obviously it can happen, but like uh, 
someone who programs very well knows how to like swerve and make sure their athletes aren't getting that so like i'm quite lucky that i've gone to a gym that the the guy who yeah. programs he's very good at what he does he makes sure the program's on par like you, you couldn't really ask for a better coach in that regard like yeah he makes sure his athletes are healthy a lot but, of people when it comes to programming mistake yeah. recovery like oh, 100%. you you need recovery and vo managing your volume especially in hybrid athleticism i'm sure it is in crossfit is key yeah because if you're doing too much yeah. you, you're gonna get shin splints you're gonna tear you can tear a hammy yeah. or something on a run and then you're stuck 10 miles away from yeah. home it's, anything like that last thing you want. <laughs> yeah you've, you've really got to manage the volume and yeah. recover as hard as you train so eat enough yeah. get your water down you get your eat, protein a intake, lot of pro and yeah sleep. a lot of protein and lots of sleep's, sleep sleep's the most important one but say if you had limited time would you rather pick stretching or sleep sleep good answer 100 yeah, yeah that's definitely like the sleep. best recovery yeah i mean I've, I've had days where to get my workout in i've had yeah. to i've had to sacrifice sleep and I don't, Ooh. I don't like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's stupid to do that, because personally, yeah. like I use like working out as like a mental thing. It just helps me out yeah. a lot, so it was good to do it. But if, yeah. if you want the, if you want the most like bang for your buck, basically, you need at least yeah. eight hours. Sleep. 100%. I'd say so. Like, I'm a bit. We'll probably cover this in a different episode. Sleep, but like, I'm a bit of a sleep geek. So like, I did. I went away from my coach for like a year. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I got to see like a different perspective of things. So I did learn a lot. Um, yeah. And um, it was during COVID. So I went, went this other guy and like, um, it was interesting to see how another coach does things, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Although I love my coach, my <laughs> current coach, who I've had for years. But like, uh, I didn't realize how important sleep was and recovery and like, he gave us like a big list every day that we had to check some of them you're not going to meet because yeah. you need to pay money um <laughs> but like sleep was a a very big thing so like this is probably some come on to cover in another episode so like over there because i'm in my room at the minute i've got a clock and basically i've got blackout curtains so you put them curtains and then like you have a clock and it wakes you up to like a sunrise <laughs> so like um it's naturally waking you up because when you wake up to noise, it's a bit like, Ugh, and then you feel like really tired. Whereas, yeah. we, whereas the sunrise is meant to be our natural clock. It wakes you up and you just wake up and you're just a bit like, ah, oh, that was nice. Yeah, it's like snoozing. You just keep resetting your sleep cycle and you wake up even worse and worse yeah. and worse. Yeah, you just get really groggy. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll so definitely like go into sleep. Uh, another on, time. Yeah, uh, another episode we'll get into sleep. The yeah. is, there anything, is there anything else that you want to cover um you know i'll quickly just bullet point it for anyone who needs to know it so basically yeah. have a recovery cycle have a foundation build your zone two build your build your muscle have a zone mm. three where you're doing more triples doing harder runs and Ooh. then have your then have your peak stage and then reset i've got, I've got a few things to add in so like yeah. what we didn't cover is like body weight what I think really helps is gainers. So day one, let's say you're doing one rep for three sets. Then day two, you'll do two reps, then one, then one rep, then one yeah. rep. Day day three, you'll so day three you'll do two two one. Day four, two two two. Yeah, I I, I agree I feel, with you on that. I feel like I feel like that. Helps. And then when you when you're lifting weights. Don't get me wrong, it's good to lift some heavy weight every now and again and just go for max reps. But for me, I think percentages are like, for me, that's the be all and end all. Like, that's how yeah. I got strong. So, like, percentages are key. Yeah. So, like, literally stay at one percentage for two weeks or a little bit longer. Start at 70%. 70% is not really building strength, but it's good. It's more about keeping form. And then obviously go go up. I go up like two one point two five every week, every two weeks. That's what I would recommend. Or, yeah. or if you don't want to do all that Gucci stuff, get yourself a coach, a, a good coach. 
Yeah, de- de- and now, but, if, now if you take it on. seriously, get get a coach. Oh, I think having a coach is the best thing. Like just having someone to talk about and like plan it with. Yeah. It becomes real when you you have a plan with someone. Yeah, and before yeah. we end the episode, the best advice I could give anyone is ego lift on your bicep, girls. Oh, Pro- don't listen to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, probably don't, don't do that. Don't, right. listen, don't. My biggest advice is don't be an ego lifter. <laughs> Ste- Gain, train, gains train are made smart. in the ego zone. Yeah. Tra- train smart and think smart. Ego is the enemy. The ego is the enemy. Um, yeah. yeah, so train optimally. That's that's basically the best thing I could say. Follow percentages and follow a plan, and you'll and you'll get there. I would say there. optimal. I'd say train smart. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll end it there for our arguments. Kick off. Right. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs>